Larry Anglesano at Aviation Consumer Magazine. Cirrus SF50 Vision Jet, of course. Now, since Cirrus introduced the jets, made some sizable changes with what it calls the G2 model. And before we go fly, the new SF50 Cirrus's Matt Bergwall is going to give us a once over. Of December of 2016 is when we certified the very first Vision Jet and the first customer took delivery. And then in just a few short years, in January 2019, we came out with a Generation 2 Vision Jet. And we have currently have over 125 airplanes that are flying around the world kind of as we speak. What we did with the Generation 2 airplane, we actually innovated the Generation 1 product to do a few key things. First of all, the airplane goes higher. It flies to flight level 310, and because of the extra altitude, you're able to either go further or take more passengers with you on a similar mission than our G1 airplane. Because you're burning less fuel, you can carry more payload. The second improvement on the airplane is the interior noise within the cabin. We actually brought the cabin noise down quite a bit where it's even more easier to have conversations within the cabin without headsets on. And third, we um, included um, the Perspective Touch Plus avionics, the next generation of G3000 avionics. And these avionics have done a few key things for us which we're able to start adding even more features to the airplane. One of those being Flight Stream 510, the next one being the um, uh, full authority uh, auto throttle system, and the third being what we're going to be demonstrating today is the safe return emergency auto land system, which for the first time ever a passenger can land an airplane if they absolutely must. One of the improvements with the Generation 1 versus Generation 2 airplane, the Generation 2 airplane, we ended up taking away the BLEs that were on the Generation 1 airplane. A BLE, a boundary layer energizer, um, actually creates a turbulent airflow to ensure that the air doesn't separate and allows the air to hit, it still allow the airflow to hit the ailerons. But by, with us taking those off, we're actually able just to put a trailing tab on the trailing edge of the aileron which then is what catches the airflow and to ensure that there's airflow on the ailerons. Go for it. In the Generation 2 airplane, we did refine the cabin a little as well. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is on the seats, we took the opportunity to put some extra storage where we now have a kangaroo pouch that's in front of the pilot, perfect spot for your cell phone, and another one that's right on the side, perfect spot for an iPad. We um, enhanced the quality of our carpeting in the airplane and we also have a variety of seating options so for example the, the plane can easily configure to fit five adults you can buy what we call the family package which gets you two additional seats that fits five adults and two kids and if you end up traveling just with a few people we also have an executive configuration which is two wide seats and a center console that fits between the two seats that has tray tables extra storage yeah. Now, one thing about this airplane with this Williams engine, it's FADAC controlled and starting is literally foolproof. We'll start the startup sequence. We got the uh, engine start checklist up. We'll put the strobe lights on. There is no cast messages. Thrust level, we can make sure, ensure that it's an idle. Back at idle. Uh, brakes are held. Brakes are on. And now for the engine knob, you just want to go to the run position. And press, just press the engine start button. We'll be pitching for uh, 5 degrees. As soon as we have a positive rate of climb out of usable runway, we'll be bringing the gear up. So Matt, we're on our way to uh, 17,000 feet here. What's typical climb performance uh, we might see? It's a hot day and uh, we're loaded with three people. And, uh, so we're seeing probably about uh, 13 to 1500 feet per minute right now. And we are pretty loaded up with three people, uh, a lot of fuel 
and um, it is a warm day out there. It's um, yeah, ISA plus 15 at the moment or current altitude. So this is typical for your warmer days. Uh, your cooler days, you're gonna get you're gonna see above you know 2,000 feet per minute. About runway performance, we just departed uh, Hartford Brainerd Airport, yep. which is uh, about what 4,900 feet or so. Yep. And our uh, takeoff roll was about uh, about 2,500 feet. See, let's talk a little bit about this auto throttle and uh, how it might work in the real world. So we we'll go to the flight plan, going back to the FMS profile. We have uh, so we have a climb, have it set at 155 or 0.32 Mach in the transition altitude. So we go from knots to Mach number at 18,000 feet. We have an airspeed limit of 250 at 10,000 feet. And we have a terminal speed of 200 knots essentially in the, around the airport. We have a cruise speed now. Pretty much what this will do is just ensure you don't hit the barber pole. Okay. And we have a descent speed that's all set in here as well. That will be 0.52 knots or 245 knots. And it has a speed limit. And then also terminal area, when you get close to the airport, it slows you down 185 knots. November 701 Delta Tango contact. The reason why that is, flaps extension speed is 190. Okay. So now when you put when you put the flaps down to 50%, it, it will then switch over to 140. Then when you put the flaps at 100%, the airspeed will switch to 95. So essentially what that means is you don't have to touch the throttle above 200 feet on the uh, takeoff and uh, 200 feet on the descent. Yeah, 400 feet on takeoff, 200 feet on descent, correct. Now, Matt, the uh, first generation airplane was uh, approved up to uh, 280, 28,000 feet. The G2, 31,000 feet. How do you see that affecting the ops uh, of the airplane as far as uh, the typical trip? Absolutely. So, uh, even just that 3,000 feet of extra altitude gives us a few different things. Um, it allows you, it bur you burn less fuel. That would allow you to uh, either go further. Uh, if it's just you know if you have the, for the same amount of payload versus a G1, or it allows you to carry up to about 150 pounds more than a G1 airplane for more of those intermediate trips, because you're carrying less fuel, so you can carry more payload. And of course, to be certified that high, you need uh, your RBSM. Did the old airplane have RBSM? No, it did not. Did so not. So the G2 is also 100% RBSM compliant. So we're at uh, 310, 31,000 feet in cruise. Good time to do a speed check. What do we got, Matt? We just passed uh, 300 knots of the true airspeed. So at uh, flight level 310, true airspeed 300 knots. What do we got for fuel burn? We got 60 gallons an hour. You know, I just took off my headsets to listen to the uh, listen to the sound in the airplane. You guys have have uh, done some things to make this cabin quieter. Big improvement, I think, since the uh, G1. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. Yeah, we do have a passive system that, that we put in the airplane. Um, just as we kind of recognize where the noises of the G1 were coming from, and we attack kind of the big noises first. And this, that passive system does quite uh, bring the cabin down quite a bit. Mentioned it before, worth mentioning again, anytime I'm in this airplane, I uh, have just got an amazing view of the outside. Um, uh, visibility is great, uh, both in the front cockpit and for passengers in the back cabin with those big windows. For the cabin experience was kind of our number one priority when we initially uh, built the airplane, both for the pilots and for the passengers in the back. Let's try to create that. Um, very comfortable and a very pleasurable experience no matter where you sit in the airplane. As we go to production, Cirrus is working toward type certification of Garmin's emergency auto land system, which is called Safe Return in the Vision Jet. Now, as it does in the Piper M600 turboprop single, the Safe Return engages automatically if there's a pilot incapacitation, or it can be manually engaged. It can also be disengaged at any time by pressing the autopilot disconnect button. Now unlike the Piper where the Autoland switch is on the instrument panel, Cirrus has a big red button in the cabin overhead so anyone in the aircraft can get to it. Now safe return will be standard in all 2020 Vision jets once it's certified. I got to experience a full safe return deployment en route to Plattsburgh, New York. 
One of the things that's nice about our butter where it's at is you can either the back row passengers can touch it or the people in front can do it as well. Okay. Just reach up, push the button. Just reach out, push the button. Emergency auto land activating. And if you did need to disconnect Emergency because it was an accident, land you could have done activating. it right at this point. Emergency auto land activating. Automated emergency communication one of so Right now it would be communicated to air traffic control, even though we're in demo mode right now. It would also be squawking uh, 7700 or some emergency frequency, and it also will be uh, talking on the emergency frequencies as well, as well as whatever one you currently are on, in whatever ATC frequency we are. Right, so traffic is at 972, departing to the southwest, Plattsburgh. And again, the screens are very simple, um, giving you exactly how much miles you have left how much fuel you have. We'll be descending in a minute, turning left in a minute, where we're going to. Automated emergency. So the current price point of the Vision Jet is we're at 2.75 million for a fully equipped G2 Vision Jet. And our current order book is about 500 aircraft orders. I do want to say though, if you are interested in a Vision Jet and want to get one sooner, um, there is different opportunities, whether it's demonstration aircraft or position holders who are in line who uh, Vision Jet ownership is no longer part of their future. Now single engine turbine buyers looking elsewhere will have to look to the turboprop market the Williams turbofan-powered Vision remains in a class by itself. To get auto throttle in Garmin's G3000 avionics, there's a Dihair TBM940. It has more range, more speed, and a higher price tag by over a million dollars. Now, as we go to production, the company hasn't announced Autoland, but we think it eventually will. There's also Piper's M600 with less speed and a bit more range for just under $3 million. And there's also the Pilatus PC12 NGX as priced a million dollars higher, is slightly slower, and has Honeywell avionics. Now, you can look for a full report of the second generation Vision Jet and an upcoming issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. Reporting for Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Anglisano, and thanks a lot to Matt for the uh, good demo.